Right, we're now on to task 2A, part 1, where you're asked to develop the APR calculator worksheet. Now, first of all, you might be looking at this APR percent and thinking, oh gosh, how am I going to get this done? If we actually look at what the question asks, is it asks you to show evidence of what the interface looks like. So a number of aspects to this that we don't have to actually complete. For example, you don't need to complete anything that I've highlighted in yellow here. So the customer having to be 17 years of age, that is done for a validation rule. As long as we make sure that the date that we use means that the customer is over 17, we'll be fine. Only customers full or provisional driving license are eligible for a car hire purchase. Well, this is all to do with this statement down here. Well, if we make sure that we've put either non and therefore make you are not eligible, or we put full and you are eligible, then it doesn't matter. And it says that the APR should be surrounded by a green border if they're eligible. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to say that they're not eligible and it will be surrounded by a red border. And we can just put that in manually and you won't need to do any calculations. So let's have a look at what actually needs to be done on the spreadsheet. First of all, you need to put in the data that's in this question. So if we just put in the labels, then we've got a good start. Next, let's look at the instructions that need to go in. So I've just put some instructions in italics here. You can choose what instructions you want. We need a title. And if we go for APR calculator, like the uh, question suggests, what we can then do is merge some cells. So if I was to merge these three cells here, when we can put it across all three of those. So we go for alignment, merge cells. And whilst I'm at it, we'll give it a gray border, uh, sorry, a black border, and we'll give it a gray fill, a uh, bit like in the question. And of course, we can make that larger and bold and centered, and it now starts to look a bit like what the question is asking. Now, I said that we're going to actually go for something that says you are not eligible. So let's write that in. You are not eligible for a car hire purchase. Now, before I carry on, I just want to make sure that I'm copying it exactly as it says. It says you are not must be in capitals. So let's do that and put that into capitals. Now, the APR rate we're going to put here. And what we're going to do is we want it to be a bit bigger than everything else. So again, we're going to merge some cells. So if we go again for alignment and we'll merge them and we're going to go for a border uh, so we'll put a border around and we want it to be red. We're going to go for red border by default. So there we go, we've got red border. And again, let's go for that grey fill because that's what the question is showing us. So what we're going to do is later on when we put in the guarantor, so not the guarantor, the driving license type, we're going to set it to be non because it says that if they haven't got a driving license type of full or provisional, then they're not eligible. Only customers full or provisional driving licenses are eligible for a car hire. So let's do some of the basic options. First of all, we'll be the only basic option is the date of birth. And all we've got to do is leave space for that to be entered. Well, we'll put in some data so that we've got something to print. And we'll put a border around it. So let's go for a nice thick border. And now it's looking like the question itself. Also for the credit rating, we're going to need a border and for the employment status, we're going to need a border. Now the employment status needs to be a drop down box and it needs to have, okay, these things, a drop down box should be list used to select the employment status and it needs to be one of these options here. So we do that using validation. So in the data ribbon, we can go to validation and we can choose a list. And now we can type in here what our validation options are going to be. So it's full time and we separate everything with a comma. Part time, self-employed. And uh, the question has actually got a capital E. So we'll put a capital E on there. Casual or unemployed. Now you can create a list. So you could have a list on a different worksheet and you could refer to that list on that different worksheet by putting it as a range. If you want to do that, that's absolutely fine. You're going to be importing some data later and it would go on to the second worksheet. So let's just check that that works. There we go. So full-time, part-time, self-employed. 
Brilliant. Now while we were talking about worksheets, we needed to rename this to APR Calculator. So that's that job done. Now our credit rating is going to be using a, a scroll bar. Now in order to use the scroll bar and other options such as the drop down, um, not the drop down box, the radio buttons and the tick box, you need to have the developer ribbon available. Now if that's not available to you, right hand click any part of the menu and go to customize the ribbon and make sure that this developer option here is ticked and that will give you all the options that you need to add in the form controls. Now that we've got our developer ribbon available, we'll use this and we will start by inserting the tick box because that's the easiest one to do. So this is the tick box for Guarantor. So if you go to insert, you'll see there's two options here. There's form control and there's ActiveX controls. We're going to be using the form controls. So I'm going to grab the tick box and I'm just going to draw the shape of where I want it to go here. And we need a bit of space then to put the text next to it. So I'm going to change that to be Guarantor. Now what happens is when we tick this box, it will link to a different cell. And so we want it to link to a cell where it's going to put true or false. So I'm going to use this cell here, but to make things easy, rather than calling it E18, I'm actually going to give this cell a name. And as you can see, I've typed it in up here at the top called Guarantor. So now, if you look at one above, it's E17, but this one is called Guarantor. So I can refer to that cell as Guarantor, which is much easier to remember. So what we're going to do is have a look at the uh, control. And so we'll format the control here. And we're going to change it so that it's cell link. So where it links to is going to be Guarantor. And you'll see what happens now. If I click on OK, when we tick on it, that becomes true. When we untick on it, it becomes false. I've made these cells grey. Uh, you would probably make them white yourselves because you don't want them to be seen. But I've made them grey so that we can at least see what's going on there. So you tick it and it makes a change. Okay, so we'll now have a look at the driving license type. So we're going to be putting a group of option buttons in here. Now because option buttons are normally mutually exclusive, then we need to look at making sure they belong in a group. So if we had, for example, another set of option buttons, then it wouldn't affect what's going on there. So the first thing we need to do is insert, and then we want the group option, which is this one here. So I select the group box, you can draw its shape like that, and we'll have some text on there that says something straightforward like, please select which is what you're showing on the example. Now all we've got to do is put in the buttons. So I put in a radio button. First one can be for a full provisional license. So there we go, we'll do full. And then we repeat that for the second and the first. So I've added the other two option buttons there for you. Now what happens is when you select these, you can see that you can only select one at a time but it will store the values one, two, and three. So we need to say where we're going to store them. So first of all, we'll select a cell. So this seems an appropriate one. Again, instead of calling E12, let's call it something that we can remember like DL type, DL for driving license. Okay, so that's now named. And I can set any one of these buttons. It doesn't matter which one I choose. And choose the cell link as DL type. And now you can see as I click on each of them, it changes from one for full, two for provisional, and three for none. Our final form control is going to be for the credit rating, which we're going to store here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to name that as credit rating. And we'll just have a look at the question. It says a credit rating is a score provided by credit reference agencies. So it tells organizations how good a person is at managing their finances. It can range from zero to 5.99 and we're told to use a scroll bar and that when we move the scroll bar we should increment the credit rating by 0 0.1. Now we're going to do this and it, when we first do it it's actually not going to work quite as we expect it to work but we have got a workaround so just bear with me whilst we go through that. So we're going to insert 
a scroll bar, so you need to find those. Now, you've got two that look very similar. You've got this one, which is a spin button, and that will be always be vertical. This one is a scroll bar, and it will go in whichever direction you decide it's going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my scroll bar below this box here. There it is, and we'll go to format the control. Now, a lot of this is very straightforward. It says that we're starting at zero. Our minimum value will be zero, and our maximum value will be, well, let's go for 5.99. Now, this is where it doesn't quite work the way we want it to work, because I'm going to go for an incremental change of 0 0.01, and we'll put the cell link of credit rating. I just want you to see now what the problem is going to be. It's to do with decimals. So, as I try and change this value here, you can see that it will only change by one at a time. And if I try and put in a value that is decimals and then try and move, it goes haywire. And if we have a look, go to Format Control, it's changed everything back to singles. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a temporary cell here that is going to work on everything based in singles. And then we're going to divide it all by 10. So I'm going to go here to uh, name that cell. I'm going to call it credit rating times 10, so x10. So what I'm going to do is format the control and we're going to have our maximum value this time. Instead of being 5.99, we're going to have it as 59. Now this question here on here is wrong. It should just say up to 5.9. So don't worry about the fact it says 5.99. That'll be correct by the time you see the question. The incremental change okay, is going to be 10 at a time, but we want to move it by 0 0.1, sorry, so it will be 1 at a time, because we're going to divide by 10. And the we'll page change is if you like click on the grey bits either side. So that's optional. Uh, we'll leave that as 10. And this time we're going to have our cell link as being the credit rating times 10. So now watch what happens as I move this. It moves up in ones, and you can see this value here is now 38, and as I increase, it goes all the way up to 59. So now if I set this cell to be equal to the credit rating times 10, you can see it's picked up the name, and then divide it by 10, we can now go up in increments of 0 0.1 up to 5.9. So it's a bit of a fiddle around the way that we wanted to actually do things, but it works. Now we named some of our cells, but we do need to name the other cells that we haven't named yet. So this one here, we're going to name employment status, so that we can refer to it later. And this one here, we're going to name date of birth. And the APR percent one, we're going to name as APR, and we'll be using that later on as well. That is the interface completed. You can actually print that off and to print it off you're told to remove the grid lines and headlines and not headlines, the headings. So if we go to view and we can remove headings, remove grid lines and now you can do a print screen of this area here. You don't want these grey bits because they're just temporary values. So you can do a print screen of this area here and as long as you make sure that none is chosen for your driving license type, then it's always going to be a red surround. And I can just type in zero in there, and it will take that value of zero. You can see there that I forgot to set it as centered and a large font. So we'll just do that before we finish off. Okay, And you can screenshot that now, but make sure you've set that as none. The other thing to do is when you screenshot, Notice that if you want the drop down box to show, you have to click on this cell. So make sure you've clicked on that cell before you do the screenshot, and then you'll be able to get the drop down box in. So that's the interface completed.